Nick Carter, Master Detective. Today's Nick Carter adventure, the case of the haunted burial cave. I wish I hadn't come into this whole cave. I hate places like this. I always feel as if the roof were going to drop on me. My, this section of the cave is huge. Yes, I think the secret burial chamber we're looking for must be much like this. Hmm. Just look at those big rocks up there hanging over us. Well, There's somebody up there. Put out the lantern. Get back against the wall. That big rock is going to crush us there. Now another intriguing transcribed adventure with Nick Carter, Master Detective. Presented in cooperation with the Mutual Network by Dr. Scholl's Inopad. World famous relief for corns, calluses, bunions, and sore toes. In a moment, the case of the haunted burial cave. But first, are you one of the four million? We hope not. Four million is the number of Americans injured by accidents in the home every year. Now, most of these injuries are caused by falls. Falls which range in seriousness from sliding on a scatter rug to diving accidentally headfirst down a flight of stairs. Now, these accidents in the home are 100% preventable. Why don't you make a safety check of your home today? Appoint yourself a committee of one to go through the house from cellar to attic and check potential sources of accidental injury. Pay particular attention to your stairways. Remember that stairs are for stepping, not storing. Remove articles that have been given semi-permanent storage on the top step. They don't belong there. Move them and find a more fitting storage spot. Teach your children to put their toys away when they finish playing. And during your inspection trip, and after it too, think safely and live safely. This message is brought to you as a public service. Now, today's adventure starring Lon Clark as Nick Carter, the case of the haunted burial cave. In an isolated area near the Canadian border, a small archaeological expedition is camped near the mouth of an unexplored cave. The head of the exploring party, Cole Adams, crouches alone on a narrow ledge in the huge cavern, the pale light of his lantern casting distorted shadows on the dripping wall. Who's there? Is that you, Farrell? Well, answer me! Why are you hiding in the shadows? You were behind me! Oh, the view from this plane is just magnificent. Yeah, lovely country. Mm hmm. So, Mr. Farrell, you found Mr. Adams after he was attacked. Is that right? Yes, that's right. His wife was worried when he didn't come back, so I went into the cave after him. He was still unconscious. But he's all right now. Oh, yes, Miss Bowen. He's fully recovered now. Well, I'm still not certain that's why Mr. Adams asked me to come up here. Well, the nearest town is 30 miles away. Mr. Adams went in and talked to the deputy sheriff there, but the man refused to take any action. Oh, but surely with such a clear case of assault of intent to kill... The authorities would be forced to investigate. Well, most of these people feel we have no right to be poking around in the old burial cave, and they'd be very happy if we decided to pack up and leave. Oh, so when the deputy sheriff refused to take any action, Mr. Adams called Nick. Yes, and when you agreed to come up here, I was sent to meet you. It's only about an hour by plane, but it takes forever in a car. The roads are so bad. Who's backing this expedition, Mr. Farrell? Adams secured a grant from the Norwood Foundation. He and his wife were in this district last year on a vacation. Adams heard about this cave, did some superficial exploring, and decided it might be a very rich archaeological find. Well, why hasn't the cave been explored before now? Well, it's fairly inaccessible, and there are a lot of superstitious stories about the place. The natives are sure it's haunted by the ghosts of the old Indians who were buried there. I see. How many members in your party? Well, there's Cole Adams, his wife, and myself. And we hired a guide, an Indian named Sam Big Eagle. Hmm. At first, he claimed he could lead us directly to the hidden burial chamber, but since we hired him, he's done nothing but slow us up. Hey, that Echo Lake over there, Mr. Farrell? Yes, that's it. You can see Jeff White's cabin through the trees there. Well, who's Jeff White? Oh, he's a very nice guy. He's, he's blind. He lives there on the lake all by himself. I see. Mr. Farrell, you said your Indian guide blamed the ghosts of his dead forefathers for the attack on Cole Adams. What do you think happened? 
Well, I'm an archaeologist, Mr. Carter, not a detective, but I'm sure of one thing. Those big purple bruises on Cole Adams' throat weren't made by a ghost. The entrance to the cave certainly isn't very large, Mr. Adams. No, it's most deceptive. But after the first 25 yards, the entrance passage grows progressively larger. I see. We'll have a look at it in the morning. I must say, Mr. Carter, that I'm sorry you agreed to come up here. Neva. Why do you say that, Mrs. Adams? Because if you'd refused, Cole might have been willing to give up this silly exploration. I've too much at stake to be frightened off by a few ghost stories. And was it a ghost that nearly choked you to death? No, it was not. Those were very human fingers at my throat. I'm hoping Mr. Carter will soon be able to tell us who it was trying to murder me and why. Oh, no. Where are all the explorers? Oh, uh, over here, Jeff, by the cave entrance. Well, this is Jeff White, the blind man we were telling you about earlier. Oh, yes. Kevin tells me you have guests, Cole. Yes, that's right. Nick Carter and his assistant, Miss Bowen. This is Jeff White, the mayor of Echo Lake. Hello, Mr. Howdy White. Do. That title is quite unofficial, but welcome anyway. You've come to investigate the attack on Cole? Yes, that's right. I'm glad. I was afraid Cole might decide to pack up and leave. And I've been spoiled by having someone to talk with. You mean you live up here all alone, Mr. White? I do now, Miss Bowen. I hope you'll both come to see me while you're here. Oh, well, they certainly will, Jeff. I want them to see your house. It's just beautiful. That's thanks to Muriel. Well, I mustn't stay. I just want to say hello. Oh, oh, but Mr. White, aren't you afraid to wander through these woods alone after dark? For me, Miss Bowen, it's always dark. And I feel perfectly safe in these woods. I know all these paths by heart. Gosh. I, I think that's remarkable. Well, he's a remarkable man, Miss Bowen. He was a brilliant chemist and was blinded in the laboratory explosion. Mm -hmm. Yes, I noticed the Phi Beta Kappa key he wears on the keychain. He received a large cash settlement for the loss of his eyes, and he and his wife came up here to live. Is she the uh, Muriel he mentioned? Yes. She ran off several months ago with a local no good. Mm. I mean, she just walked out on him? Yep. Just disappeared. Hm. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'm feeling rather tired. <laughs> I think I'll turn in. Good night. Good night. Good night. Mr. Adams, the morning you were attacked, you got up early. Then you went into that cave alone? That's right. I'd gone some distance inside when it seemed to me that I heard digging. Digging? Well, it was very remote, and it stopped as I approached. Uh -huh. And then without warning, I was... Seized from behind. Hmm. Now, tell me, do you think it could have been some Indian who resents this intrusion upon his sacred burial cave? It could be. Or it might have been someone using that as a cover-up, Mr. Carter. Well, how do you mean? Well, as you noticed, I have a most attractive wife, many years younger than I am. My assistant, Kevin Farrell, has quite a reputation as a Don Juan with the ladies. Are you accusing your assistant of trying to murder you? No, I am making no accusations. I only know that someone tried to kill me, and I expect you, Mr. Carter, to find out who it was and see to it that a second attempt doesn't succeed. In just a moment, we'll return to today's adventure with Nick Carter, Master Detective. But first... You know, from early childhood, we're taught not to neglect our eyes or teeth. But when it comes to our feet, it's another story. Yet, government records prove that seven out of every ten of us are troubled by either painful corns, calluses, bunions, sore toes, or tender spots on the feet. And for one reason only, shoe friction and pressure. Now, the way to stop all that needless distress in a hurry is to promptly protect any sensitive spots on your feet or toes with soothing, cushioning Dr. Show Zeno Pads. Zeno Pads give super fast relief from pain, make new or tight shoes feel easy on the feet. Stop your corns, calluses, and blisters before they can start. Remove corns and calluses, one of the fastest ways known to medical science, when used with the separate medications included in every box. No other method can make all these claims, Yet, Dr. Scholl's Zinno pads cost only pennies at application. So, get a box right away. That's Dr. Scholl's Zinno. Z-I-N-O. Dr. Scholl's Zinno pads. Sold everywhere.
Now back to the case of the haunted burial cave. Today's adventure with Nick Carter. It's late morning, and Nick and Patsy, accompanied by Cole Adams and his wife, are preparing to enter the mysterious burial cave. I don't know where that Indian guide of ours is, but I guess we can manage just as well without him as with him. I haven't seen him all morning. Uh, where is Mr. Farrell? Well, he says he's going to try to catch us some fresh fish for lunch. Oh, honestly, Cole, that coat of yours still reeks of mothball. It's a good, clean smell, dear. Ish. You have your lantern, Mr. Carter? All set. And I have mine, so I think we're ready. No! What? You not go in there! No! There's your missing guy. He's been in the cave. That's why we haven't seen him. You not go in sacred cave. Oh, now look here, Sam. I'm not paying you to wander off whenever the notion takes you. Now, what were you doing in the cave? Very bad place. Bodies, dead people there. We know that. That's why we're interested. You go in cave, you die like others. Now, listen, Sam. If this is a burial cave, people were taken here after they were dead. They didn't die in the cave. No. They die there. You die, too. I've had enough of this nonsense. Are you going to guide us into this cave or not? No. You go away. All right, then. We'll go in without you. I not let you go in there. Oh, he's going to hit you. Sam, get out of the way. Uh, you point gun at Sam. All right, go. Sam warn you. Go in cave and die. Like others. <laughs> Had you gone much further into the cave than this when you were attacked, Mr. Adams? Oh, yes, I'd say about 50 yards from here. There's a sharp turn and then a, a kind of a recess. I, I wish I hadn't come. I hate places like this. I always feel that the roof is going to drop on me. Well, you can go back if you like, Neva. Help Kevin fish. Hey, wait a second, wait a second. Hmm? Well, what's this? What is it, Nick? That's some old 38 cartridges, Patsy. Oh. Someone stood here and fired a dozen or more shots. Well, say, look here on this wall. Someone tried to scratch a message. And you are. Uh, murder, maybe? Oh, it's probably just somebody wanting to leave their name for posterity. Well, it's been written fairly recently, I'd say. Well, shall we go ahead? Yeah. So, Mr. Adams, what did your Indian guy do for a living before he hired on with you? A little of everything, hunting, trapping, prospecting. Prospecting for gold? Oh, no, no. The uranium fever hit this country. Oh. Everybody was out hoping to find a rich uranium pocket and get wealthy overnight. My, this section of the cave is huge. Well, I think the burial chamber must be something like this. Oh. Look at those big rocks up there. They just seem to hang. What? Somebody up above us. Put out the lanterns. Get back against the wall. That big rock. They're trying to crush us. <laughs> Nick, Mrs. Adams seems to be resting quietly now. Oh, good. Well, Mr. Adams, how about it? Should we go back to the cave? Well, we've lost so much time now, Mr. Carter. I suggest we wait until morning and go in without the ladies. Oh, well, that's fine with me. You think it was Sam Big Eagle who pushed the rock down on you, Cole? Yes, Jeff, it must have been. He tried to keep us from going into the cave, and when that failed, he... Probably followed us and tried to crush us with that boulder. I came too close for comfort. If Nick hadn't pushed us all back against the wall, why, we'd have been hit. I'm sorry Neva's hysterics prevented our investigating further. Say, Farrell hasn't returned from his fishing trip yet, has he? No. And I don't see him out in the lake either. I have a suggestion that since Mrs. Adams is so upset, why don't you let her stay here at my cabin? Miss Bourne could stay with her and I'll bunk down over at your camp. Why, Sure. Oh, that's very kind of you, Jeff. That's quite a collection of keys you have there, Mr. White. Oh, it's ridiculous of me, I suppose, to wear them up here. But they're keys I used to use when I was a chemist. Oh? Offices, labs, lockers, so on. And I wear them on my belt because I like to hear them jingle. They remind me of the past. And a very happy past. And it's certainly a very cheerful sound. Well, if we're not going back into the cave today, suppose we see if we can locate Sam Big Eagle. Right. There are several questions that Indian's got to answer. And I'll also be interested to hear what Kevin Farrell's been doing while somebody was trying to kill us.
Are you accusing me of trying to kill you, Adams? I only wondered what you'd been doing all day. You don't seem to have caught many fish. I didn't have any luck. No, no, the luck was with us this time. Now, look here, I've had about enough of this. If I wanted to kill you, I wouldn't sneak around pushing rocks over onto you. Well, maybe you'd prefer to strangle me with your bare hands. I don't have to take that from you, Adams. Here, Adams, Farrell, stop it. Well, you're stop it. You're this child. Oh, God. The important thing right now is the fact that Sam Big Eagle has disappeared. Stop your quarreling and let's see what we can do about finding him. came into our camp during night, took my rifle, my lantern, my good coat. Where's Jeff White this morning? Probably left early for one of his hikes. Night and day are all one to Jeff. I suppose we really should have checked at Jeff's cabin to be certain the women are all right. Why shouldn't they be? Well, with Sam Big Eagle prowling around, it might have been a good idea to check. Well, I think it's more likely he's waiting for us here in the cave. Hey, look. Hmm? There's a light up ahead. You're right. What do you suppose that is? Some kind of a trick? We better go slow. It's in the same big chamber where we were attacked yesterday. What? It's a lantern lying on the path. And there's someone beside it. Hmm? Why, it's Sam Big Eagle. No. Oh. He's been strangled. <laughs> In just a moment, we'll return to today's adventure with Nick Carter, Master Detective. But first, now hear a mutual minute. A large portion of the responsibility for keeping the American public the best informed in the world belongs to radio newscasters, commentators, and analysts. On Mutual, you'll find veteran newsmen in every category who are experts in their fields and who take their responsibility to you, the listener, with utmost seriousness. Whether you prefer a fast five-minute digest of the big headlines of the moment or a thoughtful, penetrating, and informed commentary, Mutual is your network for news as you like it and when you like it. Wednesday evenings, they're full of Lewis Jr., Gabriel Heater, Frank Edwards, and Ed Pettit with full quarter hours of news, as well as Bill Henry and his famed five-minute capsule. And the daytime favorite, Robert F. Hurley, heard every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening. And Hazel Markell brings the woman's point of view from the nation's capital each Tuesday and Thursday evening. These are but several of the mutual names for news. Hear them regularly over most of these same stations. Now back to the case of the haunted burial cave. Today's adventure with Nick Carter. The body of the murdered guide has been brought out of the cave. And Cole Adams has gone to tell his wife and Patsy. Outside the cave entrance, Nick and Farrell examine the body. How long do you think he's been dead, Mr. Carter? I'd say not more than an hour. Well, then the killer may still be in the cave. This is possible, although it's more likely he got out before we started in. That's Cole's coat Sam's wearing. I'd recognize it anywhere. Yeah. And he had Cole's rifle and lantern with him, too. Yeah, strange about the lantern, don't you think? Oh, what do you mean? Well, seems to me that if I'd killed someone, I wouldn't go away and leave a lantern burning beside the body. Unless... Unless I wanted to call attention to the murder. Hello. Back from the cave so soon? Oh, good morning, Jeff. There's been an accident. An accident? Is someone hurt? Someone dead. We found the body when we started into the cave. An awful shock for poor Mrs. Adams. Aunt Neva wasn't with us. Cole is going to tell her and Miss Bowen about it now. Oh. Well, I'm glad she was spared the first-hand shock. After yesterday, it would have been too much. Mr. White, you haven't asked us who was murdered. I assumed it was the Indian. Yes, that's right. He was strangled to death. That accounts for his disappearance yesterday. No, it doesn't. He came back to the camp during the night. He was killed early this morning. How can you know that? He stole Cole's coat and rifle and lantern. Oh. By the way, Mr. White, you must have left camp very early this morning. Yes, it was very early. I couldn't sleep, so I went down to the lake. I find it soothing to listen to the water. I see. Well, shall we join Adams and the women at the cabin, Mr. Carter? Yeah, I want to arrange for another expedition into that cave. But I can't understand why Sam Big Eagle should have been murdered. 
maybe it was to frighten the rest of us away. I'm no sleuth, Mr. Carter, but mightn't the Indian have been killed because he knew too much? You mean perhaps he knew who'd attacked Mr. Adams earlier? Yes. But why didn't he tell us? Well, he might have been paid to keep quiet. Why, yes. And then the murderer arranged to meet him in the cave to make a payment and killed him instead. Mr. Adams, has it occurred to you that there may be other entrances to the cave? Well, it's very likely. A cave system as complex as this one would be almost certain to have another opening or other openings on the surface. But we haven't located any of them as yet. Do you want me to go into the village to get the deputy sheriff? Oh, yes, yes, if you will, Mr. Farrell. It'll take me all day. That means I can't possibly get him back here before late afternoon tomorrow. It's a pity we haven't a telephone. Well, I think we should all agree that no one is to go into that dreadful cave again until Kevin gets back with the deputy sheriff. Sorry, Mrs. Adams. I can't make such a promise. Does that mean you intend to go back into the cave, Mr. Carter? I haven't any choice. I've got to go into that cave to find an answer to this riddle. Well... When do you mean to go in? That, Mrs. Adams, must be a secret between Miss Bowen and me. Mrs. Adams seems to be asleep. So do the men. Then now we'll be able to slip away to the cave without anyone knowing we've gone. No, 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 Patsy. That'll defeat my purpose. Your purpose? Yeah. The killer must hear us leave. There's no point in our going into the cave. Oh. So as we go out, I'll just close this cabin door a little too loudly. There. You think that'll be heard, Nick? By the person listening for it, yeah. And now we go to the cave? Yes, but not too quickly. Hmm? We want to allow our killer plenty of time to set his trap. <laughs> I don't think we were followed into the cave, Nick. Well, I didn't expect to be. I'm sure the killer has a private entrance. Well, if, if there is someone waiting in here to kill us, Nick, doesn't this lantern make us an awfully good target? No, no Patsy, the lantern isn't important. Oh, it is to me. Oh, golly, I'd hate to be in here in the dark. It's bad enough even with a lantern. <coughs> oh! Now, Patsy. Now, stay down the, flat. The lantern. I dropped it and it went out. Now... Now we can't see who's shooting at us. That's the way I wanted it. That... That sounds like Jeff White. <coughs> now you two are in the dark. Just as I am. That means we're evenly matched, Carter. In the cave, a blind man has the same chance you do. You better give yourself up, White. <coughs> give myself up? No, I'm going to kill you. It may take time, Carter. But I'm safely hidden behind a big rock. I can be very patient. I'm going to kill you just as surely as I killed the others. In just a moment, we'll return for the conclusion of today's adventure with Nick Carter, Master Detective. But first, now hear a mutual minute. Remember the song, accentuate the positive and eliminate the negative? That's a pretty good idea, generally speaking. It's always easy to find something to gripe about, but, well, maybe we'd find a lot more to sing about if we only started to think for a minute. About the future, for instance. The fact, well, that we have more reason to believe in our country's capacity for development and progress than ever before. America is still a young country. Still expanding, still growing, physically, economically, and in the realm of new ideas and new sciences. The infants, the children, and the young people of today can look forward to a tremendous period, an exciting period, one of hope and promise. And there are cold, hard facts to prove this. We believe in those facts, in the promise they hold for America's future. And the advertisers who use the time and facilities of the world's largest network believe in them, too. This message has been brought to you as a public service. <laughs> Now for the conclusion of the case of the Haunted Burial Cave. Today's adventure with Nick Carter. Nick and Patsy wait tensely in the total blackness of the cave while the blind killer crouches behind a big rock. I'm between you and the entrance, Carter. You can't escape. And you can't hit me behind this rock. I know every crevice in this cave. As only a blind man could know it. 
Is this the way you trapped your wife from the other man, White? Yes. He was going to take Muriel away. So I tricked them into coming here, where I had the advantage. Then I killed them, just as I'm going to kill you. Are you? We're hidden in a recess in the wall, so we're protected too. And we can be just as patient as you can. He dropped his gun. Yeah, here, I'll strike a match. He's down. And there's his gun. But, Nick, how did you hit him in the dark? His keys gave him away, Patsy. When he moved out from behind the rock to get a better shot at us, that keychain he wore was just like the bell on a cat. Well, Jeff White certainly had me fooled. So he killed his wife and the man she planned to run away with. That's right, Mrs. Adams. Since White recovered consciousness, he's given me the whole story. He tricked him into a rendezvous in the cave, and then in the total darkness, killed them both. The other man put up a fight, didn't he, Nick? Yeah, he must have, Patsy. Those empty shells I found on the path that first day must have been from his gun. Hmm. He crouched there as we did last night and fired at White. But not even White can fire as accurately as you can at a sound, Mr. Carter. Well, then that scrawling on the cave wall near the spot where you found the shells must have been made by White's wife. Mm Mm-hmm. She started to scratch her name, M-U-R, the first part of Muriel. But she must have been killed before she could finish it. After White killed them, he took their bodies to the inner burial chamber. He must have felt sure they'd never be discovered. Yes, but then he let the story leak out that Mrs. White had deserted him for another man. Everyone felt very sorry for White, and that was the end of it. Until we showed up here, prepared to explore that cave. Yes, but you'd given White no warning you were coming, so he couldn't move the bodies. Consequently, he had to frighten you away. And that's all he meant to do at first, just scare you off. Uh, Of course, he didn't know that my husband is a stubborn sort who doesn't frighten easily. Well, I guess my calling you into the case, Mr. Carter, must have really panicked White. Had Sam Big Eagle found the bodies? Is that why White strangled him? No, Big Eagle was murdered because he was wearing the coat he'd stolen from Mr. Adams. What's my coat got to do with it? (laughs) It smelled of mothballs. Hmm? Remember, White had to depend on sounds and odors for identification. So he killed Big Eagle thinking it was Mr. Adams. That's right. And he gave himself away when he came into the camp afterwards. Remember, Mr. Farrell, his first reaction to news that there'd been a death was... What a shock it'll be for Mrs. Adams. Because he thought he'd killed Cole. That's right. See, when he realized that Mr. Adams couldn't be frightened off, he decided to kill him to stop further exploration. I imagine he hoped to point suspicion at the Indian guide. What a shock it must have been for him to discover that he'd killed the wrong man. Another thing which pointed to White was the lantern left burning beside the body. Your reaction, Mr. Farrell, was normal. He couldn't understand why a killer would have left the lantern burning. And White simply wasn't aware of the light. Well, Mr. Adams, now that the bodies of Mrs. White and the other man have been recovered, there's no reason you shouldn't go ahead with your explorations. This burial cave wasn't haunted by the ghosts of ancient Indians, but by a ruthless killer who feared discovery. Nick Carter, Master Detective, is produced and directed by Jock McGregor. Copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated... It is presented each week at the same time in cooperation with the Mutual Network by Dr. Scholl's Inopads, world-famous relief for corns, calluses, bunions, and sore toes. Lon Clark is starred as Nick. Charlotte Manson is featured as Patsy. Others in today's cast were Arnold Moss, Gertrude Warner, Bob Haig, John Brewster, and George Felton. Today's script by John McGreevy. This program is fictional, and any resemblance to actual persons, living or dead, or to actual places is purely coincidental. This is Jack O'Reilly suggesting you join us again next week for The Case of the Accusing Blood, another intriguing transcribed adventure with Nick Carter, Master Detective. This program came from New York. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.